Hello everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. So I hope that you are all having a great day thus far. And so in this video, we will be talking about Danielle and Earl and we have another area to keep an eye on. So as we progress to the peak of the hurricane season, here we are having these uh, areas, these new areas of interest uh, that we should be looking at. And so this is likely to be uh, happening a lot over the next several weeks. So let's go ahead and talk about the tropics. But before before I go into details, Okay, so starting out with a view of the Atlantic. So there we have Danielle well to the west of the Azores and we have Earl that is making its way north of the Eastern Caribbean right now, but it is bringing some impacts. And so let's start off with Danielle. And so we're seeing that on satellite. It is not looking the absolute best. It has wonderful rotation with it, but it is not the strongest tropical cyclone. And so it is currently a category one with winds of 75 miles per hour and it is accelerating towards the north at one mile per hour so it is expected to increase in its acceleration to the north over the next several days but of course a weakening is inevitable because it is going to be moving into cooler waters and it's previously weakened to a tropical storm and so the reason for that was likely upwelling so what happens is that the storm is almost stationary over an area of warm ocean waters and eventually it's going to be exhausting the, its fuel over that area and then we know that warm water sits above cold water so when all that warm water is exhausted uh, we have cold water rushing in to take its place and of course tropical cyclones need warm moist conditions not cold conditions in order to intensify and so that was exactly the reason for Danielle's uh, weakening however it is expected to remain a hurricane during the next several days not expected to become anything major uh, and eventually weaken to a tropical storm as it encounters more unfavorable environments and then eventually it could become post tropical by the end of this week so that is it for Danielle and then moving on to Earl so we are taking a look at satellites of the uh, cyclone here and we are seeing that it is it is compact and it is just north of the northeastern Caribbean. However, even though the center is not going to be making its way over any land areas, uh, we could still have heavy rainfall from the cyclones. So if you're in portions of the northeastern Caribbean, such as the Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico and the northern Leeward Islands, uh, please be aware of that happening. And you can let me know what the weather is like in your area if you experienced a lot of heavy rainfall yesterday uh, talking about the northeastern leeward islands here so if you're in any of those islands you can let me know what's going on there but uh, the cyclone isn't expected to linger around for a very long time so these impacts will likely last through today uh, but it is going to be eventually tur turning northward so the bahamas or the u.s you are not likely to be threatened by this at all uh, bermuda it's getting unlikely that you will be affected by this but still something to keep an eye on uh, especially in terms of the size of this so we can have the center going anywhere within this cone. That's the thing. So if we have the system making a close approach, uh, remember that it, this is just to track the center of it. Is, it does not show the size. And if we have a large system, uh, the island could very well feel some impacts from it. So only time will tell. But we're looking at maybe by the end of this week, they're about for the system to be at its closest approach to Bermuda. But it is expected to intensify into a hurricane by Thursday. And thankfully, as I said, it is not going to be a threat to land. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about what the models are showing. So the model intensity guidance here shows that uh, most of them are showing that maybe after the next, say, 72 hours, that is going to be the time when we have Earl intensifying into a hurricane, which seems likely. And some even take this up to be in a Category 3 or Cat 4. So once the uh, conditions are right out there, there is no doubt that that could happen. And uh, we've seen a lot of fish storms being very major out there. I mean, Sam of last year was a prime example of that happening. So Sam was almost a Category 5 hurricane. It had peak winds of 155 miles per hour. It was the strongest storm of the season. And it was a fish storm. But again, early is likely to bring some increased rainfall that could result in flash flooding across sections of the northeastern Caribbean. And this imagery here of the key messages say that heavy rainfall from Earl is expected to lead to limited flash, urban and small stream flooding impacts over the Leeward Islands, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico today. Rapid rises on rivers and mudslides in areas of steep terrain are possible in 
Puerto Rico. And the second pointer states that early forecast to pass to the north of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico today, and gusty winds, especially in squalls, are possible on those islands, I guess that should say. And so please be aware of that happening, guys. So that is what is up ahead for you guys in the northeastern Caribbean. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what conditions are looking like. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about this area right here. So there is a 20% chance that we could see development within this area. So, and so a tropical wave has just emerged off Africa. And in the presence of favorable conditions, it is likely that we will see development. And uh, I mean, it is September, as I said, this is not surprising. And we need to be watching the main development region for these tropical waves moving off Africa and straight into a favorable environment. And that would enable them to develop. And in terms of them being a threat to land, especially the Caribbean, uh, the high pressure, the Bermuda High is going to be influencing the path. When we have a stronger high pressure system sitting over the Atlantic, we typically have storms being steered towards the west. And that is when they become a problem for the Caribbean or the U.S. Meanwhile, a weaker high pressure system uh, enables the storms to kind of curve around them because, again, they're not so strong. And these highs are really blocks to tropical cyclone so once we have a weaker high the system is going to be able to curve around it so we typically have that northwestward track so we will really have to wait and see what is going to be happening guys but again this is the time of year to be watching the main development region for these systems are these waves developing right as they emerge off Africa and in terms of the favorability out there right now ocean temperatures are definitely favorable and uh that is definitely not a problem for storms that might develop in the main development region and make their way towards the west or to the west northwest uh, it's just this area right here where we have a pocket of cooler waters but moving on to the wind shear now we are seeing that the shear in the vicinity of earlier we have some unfavorable shear and uh, that is going to be the main reason we don't see much intensification as we head throughout the next few days but we have some favorable conditions up ahead for the cyclone and danielle is definitely in favorable shear but again uh it is very far up north and it is slowly moving it's barely moving so uh we have some of that upwelling taking place and preventing the system from looking like a very nice and a very healthy tropical cyclone but it does possess wonderful rotation and so guys that is really it for this update video and so we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening with earl again if you're in portions of the northeastern caribbean i'm sure that you are uh taking the necessary precautions and do not take any unnecessary risks and uh we have that area highlighted out in the main development region and if we have a tropical cyclone developing from that the next name to be used for this hurricane season is fiona so let's see if we're going to be having fiona developing within this area as we head into this week but of course i'm going to be keeping you guys updated as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be otherwise.